Hi, I'm Missy Wren. I'm a holistic natural horsemanship trainer. What holistic natural horsemanship is, is a method of training the whole horse. My specialty has been problem and dangerous horses. And most of the horses that I have received in my training program who were problems and had serious behavior issues typically were in pain, whether it was physical pain or emotional pain. I found that those pain issues needed to be addressed. So I developed a program, Holistic Natural Horsemanship, to address and work with the whole horse. My motto is, problems are not always training issues, and I want to train the whole horse for a safer ride. The equipment that you're going to need to work with your horse is a rope halter and a 12-foot lead rope. And let me show you how to put this rope halter on. I've seen people trying all sorts of ways to put their halter on, and I have a much easier way. I see folks doing this, putting it on, and then flipping it up and over, and they're reaching, and their horse is walking away. It can be a real pain. Take the nose piece, take the neck piece in one hand. Reach around your horse, now your horse is caught. You want to grab, Paco can I have you to step over here, there. You want to grab your neck piece, and now fish your horse's nose. And it's always nice when they put their nose in there for you. Good boy, you're such a good boy. Now to tie your rope halter, you put your neck piece in your loop. And get your knot under the chin, but not real tight, just kind of comfortable. Now to tie this, I want you to tie around your loop, not above the loop. If you do above the loop, it'll slip and make this loose and ineffective. You want to tie around your loop and then up. Okay? That's what you want to do. Now the 12-foot lead rope that I like is 5 8 inch thick. Oh man, it's easy on my hands. It makes riding so much more comfortable versus a half inch. You have to squeeze tighter to do a half inch. 5 8 inch is very comfortable. I also have a leather popper on the end. Now something that's very important is I want you to see the shank. This shank is actually a eyelet. You notice there's no metal clips. I don't use metal clips. I don't want the metal clip banging into my horse's chin. I don't want to use pain to train. So this eyelet just slips over, it hooks onto this halter, and remember, I'm iron free, so there is no metal, no metal to hurt my horse. The next piece of equipment that I like is my stick and string. The stick is approximately four feet long, and the string is six feet long. Now, I don't use the string to hit my horse with. I only use the string, typically, to desensitize. It's all right, Paco, and he's a pretty sensitive guy. Just let him know you're okay. That's what I use my string for. I don't need a lunge whip. I don't need to be hitting my horse. If you use my techniques, you won't need to hit your horse. I'll use my stick as an extension of my hand, get out of my space. And the string, like I said, is really only for desensitizing. You don't need to be whacking your horse. Remember, we don't train using pain. And Paco respects the stick because he sees it as an extension of my hand. Also, the stick is a feel-good piece of equipment. I scratch and I love with the stick as well.
I have identified four core emotional concerns that we as humans share with horses. In identifying those core concerns will help you better understand your horse and balance your nature as a human with your horse's nature. Let's begin. I'm going to bring out Tilly, a Clydesdale paint. Now Tilly comes to me as a three-year-old horse, Clydesdale, paint, as you can see she's pretty big. She absolutely knows nothing, as you can see, she knows nothing. She gets into my space, she's wiggly, she's dangerous. Get back, get back, get back, get back. Good girl. Now, that's the first core emotional concern, is appreciation. And when she got back, and she did it right, I said, good girl, and she began to lick and chew. And in order to enhance that appreciation, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna rub her neck when she does the right thing. What this does, research has found that when you rub the neck, it actually releases a chemical response, just like her mother did when her mother licked her neck. It's important to appreciate your horse letting them know that they've done the right thing. Now she's just learning, so she knows absolutely nothing. Yesterday's holistic joining was just a moment of doing the right thing, but I have to show her appreciation. Good girl. The second core emotional concern is status. Status means our position in the herd. You as the human must be at all times the herd leader. Horses are prey animals. They think in terms of prey animal psychology. Get back, get back, good girl. Her, her position in the herd is follower and she's the student. I am the herd leader and the teacher, but I must prove to her that I'm the herd leader. Her gen she is genetically required to have a herd leader. And this is a herd of two, you and your horse. Me and Tilly, we are a herd of two. She needs me to be the leader, or if I'm not, then she has to be the leader. And that is a point of stress and concern for horses. Horses would rather be in a position of comfort. They are looking for the leader. When your horse rubs on you and moves your feet, that isn't affection. That is disrespect. But that horse is disrespecting in a way that are you the leader today? And if you're not, I'm going to move your feet. There's the key. He who moves the other's feet first is in control. So I must be the one that controls the movement of her feet in order to identify myself to her as the herd leader. The third is autonomy. Now what I mean by autonomy is we as humans have the, the opportunity of free will, free choice. We decide yes or no in our lives most of the time. A lot of things are dictated to us, but for the most part, we can make those choices. Well, in the animal world, they also have autonomy as well. They make the choices too, to where they're gonna eat, where they're gonna sleep, when they're, th you know, they're thirsty, so I'm gonna go get some water. There's some choices they make, and they also choose you're going to be my herd leader, they choose to submit to that herd leader. That's autonomy. I'm going to set up choices for Tilly to make. I am going to support her in making the right decision. I will not force her to make the right decision. I will not go one, two, three, you make that decision or else. I'm going to continue to support her, honoring her autonomy to make the right decision. I'll keep putting the question or what it is I want her to do in front of her and supporting her to make that decision. And when she makes that decision, my release of pressure is gonna be crisp. And that is what we call pressure and release. Horses learn from the release of pressure, not the pressure itself. So when I get the right answer from her, allowing her to have autonomy, then I release my pressure, whether it's my body language, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today, body language and how horses speak to one another with body language.
Now the fourth core emotional concern is role. We all have a role. In our jobs at work, we have a role. In our homes, we have a role. Sometimes my role is bookkeeper. Sometimes my role is cook, laundress. That the list goes on. But our roles keep changing. Today, my role is to be the teacher. I am teaching her what she needs to know in order to be in my herd of two. She recognizes my status as the leadership, she will, and then she'll identify with my role that I am the teacher and her role is student and to be learning today and to be the follower. Now remember this horse really doesn't know anything. Uh, she comes to me three years old to start under saddle so fortunately we're going to get to see a lot of things. What I'm going to be teaching you today is using your body language and those four core concerns. I'm going to run her around and do a holistic joining with her and then I want to, you to watch my body language. I'm going to talk to her with my body language. And one thing I want to address with you right before we get started is how does it feel when I walked up to you like this? It makes you want to step back, doesn't it? If I was standing in front of you, wouldn't you want to kind of step back? That's because I'm in your space. Well, I'm going to use that very same language with my horse. I'm going to walk into my horse. If she's not getting out of my space, if I'm trying to back her up, what is it, whatever it is I'm asking her to do, I'm going to use my body language. And when she gives me the right answer, I'm going to relax my countenance and turn my shoulder to the side. Straight shoulders and forward means pressure. And a dropped countenance, get back please. Thank you, good girl. A dropped countenance, relaxed eyes is a dropped pressure at instant release of pressure. And so you'll see me being dramatic with my body. That's something that you need to do with your horse. Speak with your, your body because your horse is watching closely. So we're going to run around and do holistic joining. This is not round penning. I do not round pen horses. I use holistic joining to invoke her instinct to follow me because she recognizes me as the herd leader. Now, you don't see horses, lead mares, lead horses, running horses around in circles. I don't do that. As the lead horse, my berth is very wide. So is any lead horse in, in a herd. So I'm going to be running her off from, from place to place, saying, well, you know, I want that place now too. That's my space now. I'm going to move her around. And what I'm looking for is her signs of submission where she starts to turn to me and look at me like, well, so what is it that you want? And when she starts relaxing and looking at me, I'm going to go up to her and I'm going to appreciate her, let her know that's what I want. And the goal is to get her over to the gate. I want her to hang out at that gate, looking at me, waiting for my next command to her. Looking to me, what do I do next, herd leader? So I'm going to move her along. She's visiting and I don't want her visiting. And I turn my back. Now see, that's what the lead mare would do. She would turn her back to that horse because she did what I asked. I asked her to move off and she did. And I'm going to ask her to move off again. I don't want her down in this corner. And I'm going to turn my back. So I just got what I wanted. But I'm keeping my peripheral vision on her because I don't want her coming up and charging me. And I don't want her visiting this boy down here. And I turn my back. She did what I asked. This takes time. You don't want to rush this. You don't need to exhaust yourself. You don't need to exhaust the horse. That's not what I'm looking for. I don't want a horse to join with me to get out of pressure. I want the horse to join with me because her natural instinct tells her to follow me. She can't help but follow me because she recognizes me as the herd leader. Good girl. See, she's coming up submitted with her nose down on the ground like that. And she's a little too close. But I'm going to tell her it's all right. But when she came up to me with her nose down on the ground, that's a sign of submission. She's not ready yet. And if she walks off, then I make it my idea. You notice how she started to turn away? I made that my idea. I control her feet as the herd leader. So she's sniffing around and isn't that what they do out there in the pasture? That herd leader says, you know what, I want that spot. So I'm just going to go and just, no, I, I want that spot now. And walk away. 
I got what I wanted. And she's looking at me. Now, look, I completely dropped my countenance. No, I don't want you over there. Go on. And I don't want you down there. Now remember, I want her at the gate. But for now, she did what I asked. So I'm going to give her some time. She's just checking things out, and that's fine. This works in a round pan. My uh, training arena is 96 feet, so I'm not having to run around too much. It works just as well in this arena. I want that space too. Thank you. And she's coming into the lead mare spot because I've already identified that, ah, 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 that this is my spot. I don't want you down here. And she kicked at me. That I don't, I don't care. They kick at each other. Good. Immediately I have to appreciate that. And notice where my body is. I drop my shoulders. What a good girl. She turned to me. I'm going to go love her for that. I'm going to appreciate her for that. Good girl. And I notice she's a little worried about me uh, touching her face. So I go right into her neck because really that's where you want to appreciate your horse is rubbing the neck and down those withers. Oh, what a nice girl. And I'm just going to go to the other side because see, she hasn't figured out how to change her eyes yet either. And that's just eye changing from one side to the other because she hasn't had much uh, handling. She doesn't know anything about training. That's some instinct. It's just starting to click in. Good girl. You notice I just added the slightest pressure. She looked at me and I dropped that pressure. I stopped asking with that kiss. I kiss his pressure. What a good girl. I'm going to come in here and appreciate her. And now I'm going to walk away. And she's going to find out being with me is pretty nice. Go on. Good girl. I need the whole mind of the horse. Getting just pieces of it isn't enough. I want the whole mind, the whole body, and I could run her to exhaustion, and all I'm going to get is fear and resentment. And I want the whole horse through instinct. She was taken away at four months and put in, I think, with the donkey. And so there's not a lot of herd understanding for her horse to horse. She's been the boss for the last three years. So it's not easy for her to understand what I'm doing. Good girl. Good girl. I'll take that. Look, she's licking and chewing. When a horse licks and chews, they're thinking. They're chewing on their thoughts. And I like it when they're chewing. That's also a sign of relaxation, so she's not too stressed out. Good girl. Now, if she walks away, I'm going to run her off. But I'm going to ask, see if I can get her to move towards me. Good girl. You know, she started to walk forward, but I asked to come to me, and she did. Very good girl. Very good girl. Very good girl. Very good. Just baby steps. Isn't that great? She's starting to get it. What a good girl. I'm going to come in here and appreciate her. Very nice. I'm so proud of you. Just honoring her, appreciating her. And I honored her by allowing her to make those decisions. I guided her to make the decision and supported her along the way. 
good girl. Very nice. That's so good. Okay. Let's try a little bit more. Good girl. Good girl. Very nice. Very nice. Her feet are a little stuck about going forward. Up. You get out of my space. You walk away and show me your butt. Then you can't be with me. I'm the lead mare and you don't talk to the lead mare like that. Go on. She knows my body. I kind of got mm at her and she moo. No, and you can't be down there with Sozar. There. Good girl. Now I went in there with a stern look. Kind of, mm, you better move. Just like a lead mare would do. She'd go in there and she'd go, mm, move. She'd pin her ears. I can't pin my ears, so I can, you know, get kind of mean looking. Like my ears are pinned. And she understood that. And it was just kind of this vibe coming off of me. She moved. She gave me a yes, ma'am. But she still has quite a bit of autonomy. And that's good. I want to mold and shape that autonomy. I don't want to break a horse. That takes, that strips their autonomy. I don't want to break her. I want her to keep her dignity intact and the, the right to make the choice, but I want her to make the choices that I guide her to do. As her lead mare, she's going to go, oh, okay, I'll make that choice because you asked me because I recognize your authority and I trust you. Come on, girly. Good girl. Good girl. Let me come in and appreciate you. Good job. So you'll see I use my words quite a bit too. I want the horse to hear the words of appreciation and feel the appreciation. So through sensory, touch and through voice through her hearing she gets appreciation good girl good girl good job very good very good very good now that is instinct. Oh yes, hello. She's just checking me out. I'm going to let her stand for a moment. We'll see if she'll come over and check me out. Well, sometimes when the herd leader is just standing around nibbling on the ground, the young, younger ones, or the ones that are kind of in training being disciplined, they'll come up and see what the herd leader is doing and if it's okay to come into that herd leader's space. So I want to see if I can evoke that instinct for her to do that. She should want to come in with her head lowered as a sign of submission to me. She may not do it yet. We'll see. There it is. She's asking if she can be with me. And I 
exchange some breath with her nose to nose, as horses do as a greeting. So are you ready? And she's licking and chewing. I'm asking her if she's ready to work with me now. Are you ready? Let's see if she'll let me put the halter and lead rope on. May I put this on now? What if she runs off? Then I'll just run her off. Then she's not ready. Good girl. What a good girl. What a very nice girl. Oh, a little bit of flaring there, huh? Yeah. What a sweet girl. Okay. There are three foundational requirements every horse must learn to be with me, period. They have to. This is a safety issue. The three foundational requirements are backing up your horse, pressure and release with bonding, and leading your horse. I'm going to show you the three foundational requirements as they should look like. This is where you want to be with your horse. Paco is a great example of it. We've been together for a long time. So the first thing I, I'm going to teach that, that foundational requirement is to back up. And Paco does it very nicely. Good boy. And then I'm going to do pressure and release with bonding. I'll oftentimes just throw the lead rope over the neck. Look, he's already licking and chewing. So I'm just going to love him up. Good boy. And I do this every time before I ride, pressure and release, to make sure that he's with me today, we are connected, that he recognizes I'm the same leader yesterday, I'm the same leader today. Providing consistency gives him comfort and confidence in me. Good boy. Now I'm going to ask for the nose to the girth, and I'm going to exchange some breath. Good boy. And wait till he's... He re releases. I'm going to wait. Good job. Good boy. And what I do on one side, I do on the other. Head down. Head down. Good boy. Let me love you. Good job. And let me love you over here. Let me love you over here. I'm going to blow in the nose. Good boy. Let me get some fly spray. Stand. I want my horses to ground tie. Always stand. Good boy. Good job. Oh, what a good boy. Good boy, yes. Paco's not a big snuggler, and that's okay. You need to recognize what your horse is and isn't. I have uh, one little horse, Sozar, just snuggles and loves. Paco, he's not a big snuggler, but he'll do as I ask. So head down again. Head down. Good boy. Good boy. Now I'm going to lead him. Make sure that he's with me on leading. Good boy. He's to maintain his space and respect of my space. And when I pick up my pace, I want my horse to pick up his pace. He needs to follow me, mirror me. He's responsible not to run into me if I jump in front of him. He needs to maintain, good boy, his position. Very good. So she needs to learn to back up at the slightest pressure. And that pressure is going to come from this lead rope. And I'm just going to jiggle lightly. But I'm going to stand looking at her, and I'm going to stand like this. Back. 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 And, if, and as soon as I get it, good girl. Now notice the body language. That's what you have to do with your body. You must speak with your body for that horse to understand. Yes, you can use your voice and you can use the jiggling of the rope as support for her to learn, but she's watching me trying to read my, la my body language as horses talk to one another. That's how, they, that's how they communicate. So I have to do that with her as well. So I'm going to stand in front of her. I'm going to move her over here so you can see her better. I'm going to stand in front of her and I'm going to just jiggle lightly. And as 
as she doesn't respond, I will increase the jiggling and I'll start walking in. So pay close attention to my body language and what I'm doing with the rope. So I'm going to ask her, back, back, good girl. You notice my eyes kind of got big and I kind of got, mm, I'm going to get you. And she got out of my space and I immediately released my pressure. Instant. Good girl. Because remember, horses learn from the release of pressure, not the pressure itself. So I want her to learn to back up. So I'm going to jiggle lightly and I want a slightest jiggle. Back. Back. Good. And that was the slightest try, the smallest change. I rewarded her for, by dropping my pressure. I'm going to ask again. Back. Back. Good. Now you notice I snapped down on that. By the third time now she's learning this, I want a better response because in a dangerous situation, I want that horse to respond to me immediately as the herd leader. Good girl. Good girl. I'm going to come in here and appreciate her and invoke that chemical response of feeling good and she got the right answer. And I'm also going to invoke her thinking about it. So I'm going to stick my fingers in her mouth because I need her to chew on that, to relax about that. They're all flaring too. Good girl. Very nice. Good job. Good girl. So I'm going to ask her again to back up. Back up. Back up. Good girl. Obviously she needs more work. Not. I control her feet. She stepped forward. I didn't ask for that. Good girl. And she's licking and chewing on her own. That's good. Very nice. The next thing I'm going to teach her is pressure and release. She's going to learn about the safe and loving place that we go to when we're in trouble. This is a setup for a one rein stop. A one rein stop is your emergency handbrake in the saddle. and I'm going to ask for her head down. So good. The lightest pressure on that lead rope. Very nice. And now I'm going to ask for her nose to the girth and this is still pressure and release. So I'm asking and I've got my hand. See, I've got my hand right here on this knot. So I'm using that knot just a little bit of pressure and I can hang on to that halter if she tries to pull away. But she's never learned this so I'm going to stay with her and I want to bring her nose to the girth to the safe and loving place we go when we're in trouble. And I'm just going to love her up, and I'm just touching her in the girth, and just gently pulling that nose. Good. And as soon as she gives a little good, I release. A little bit more. I just want a little bit more so she understands. I know. Yes. Can I just love you right here? Can I just love you right here? Watch your feet. Don't let them step on you. That's why I wear steel-toed boots. Oh. Now, she's having a little trouble with this. So let me show you a way you can deal with this. When your horse is having to worry about it. Oh my girl, oh my girl, let me show you. She's just having too much of a worry. So we're going to go over here. And this is the perfect example of a horse that doesn't understand it and gets too frightened about it. She's just, I'm not going to do that. And ask her to turn around. Good girl. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask for that head down. Good. Head down. Good. I'm going to have her think about it. Take the time. Take your watch off. Don't rush it. Just because she didn't go there with her nose, she's not being stubborn. She just doesn't understand. So I'm going to give her some time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to face forward. Remember, she, her shoulder's right here. I'm just going to hug her a little bit. So when she gives, then I'll release. Good girl. And then ask a little more. Good. And release. Good girl. And we'll just baby step her through this so that she'll find out that coming over here is pretty nice. And then, oh, you're sniffing? Yeah, and can I have you right there? Oh, good girl. Good girl. Now we'll try it again. Good girl. Good girl. Now release. Excellent. I'm going to lever up for that. Good job. I'm going to try again. It's all right. And just rub on the girth area with the other hand because this is kind of my signal. I need you to come right here. Oh. Oh. No. Yeah, come right here. No, no, she's trying to find the answer and I'm just helping her. It's all right. You're all right. Let me help you. So 
let me help you just a little bit. Pull. It's all right. Just support her through it. You're okay. It's all right. I know. I know. Let me love you. There. There. When she stops, I released her. So I want her to stop moving her feet. So she'll have to learn that when I release, that means when she stops moving her feet and I release, that's what I wanted. Good girl. Good girl. Let me try it again. Good girl. A little bit at a time. There. It's all right. Baby step it for her. She needs it broken down. Really basic for her. She's never done this before. Oh. 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 It's okay to stop and move your horse to a better position in your training area or to change from one side to another. Your horse does not need to get it on one side before you work the other side. That's a myth. Let's go this way. You there? Good. Good girl. Love it. Love it again. Just waiting for her to give. Good. Good. As soon as she gave softly, then I released. I'll try it again. Some horses have a problem when you're facing, turned around looking at their bottom easier for them oftentimes good good when you just are facing forward with them they feel less vulnerable can I just love you right here pull pull good girl good girl she did a little bit that's good that's good very good girl Love you right here. Good. Very nice. And I exchanged some breath with her. I want her to know that this is the safe and loving place we go when we're in trouble. And I want her to, to bond with me in here. So, so the pressure and release is also bonding. Good girl, nice flex. She kind of gritted her teeth. She wanted to bite me, but she chose not to. Good girl. She chose wisely. Yes, that was very good. Let me love you for that. Appreciate you for that. Good girl. Good girl. See, I do better when I'm appreciated, and I know my horses do too. And that's part of balancing your nature, recognizing the things that are common to us as humans that are common to our horses and applying that. Oh, very good. Very good. And I'm going to work her mouth on that so she can think about that. Very nice. Very nice. Good girl. And you didn't really work your mouth much. I'm going to get that going. I just feather that tongue. I get in that soft spot in between the teeth where there is no teeth. It's just gum. Get your finger in there and you feather their tongue a little bit, feather the roof of their mouth. Be very careful with your fingers in there. Their tongues are very soft. The tissue on the roof of the mouth is very, is, is very soft and you don't want to scratch with your fingernails. That's kind of why I like to wear gloves too. Of course, it saves my hands. I've got a horse that's excited and pulls a rope through my hand. I don't like the rope burn. But I also, uh, it keeps me from scratching the horse unintentionally, especially in the mouth. Can I love you right here? Can I love you right here? Oh, beautiful. She's learned. Nose to girth is a safe and loving place we go. This is all going to translate it under the saddle. Very good girl. So I'm going to show you how I like to lead a horse. I want a horse half length behind. This horse doesn't lead very well, so it's going to be a very good example of how to teach a horse to lead. You can pull on this girl and she'll pull back. So I will move to the side, good girl, and get her going. Now, if she gets too close, I'm going to put my hand up, get her back. But all the time, I keep her in my peripheral vision. Also, when I stop, she better stop. And you notice I stomp my foot because I want to teach her. She's just learning. I want her to understand, stop. 
and she did a good job. So I'm going to come in here and appreciate that. You made the right choice. Good girl. You're doing such a good girl being a student. I really appreciate that. You're being a very good girl. She's taking on the role, and I appreciate that, the role of student. She's much more amenable now to learning, and she's starting to understand her status in the herd is below me. Very good, and I rose my hands a little bit, and I kind of got firm with my body. Remember, it's about body language. <clears throat> Stop. And I won't have to use so much dramatic body language as the horse learns, but I over-dramatize to teach. Good girl. And I encourage her all along the way to get back. Good girl. Support her and encourage her. Now I want to step in front, and she's to manage her space between me. She's responsible. Part of her role is being responsible for the space between us. She's to keep the slack in that rope, but not too much. And I should not have to drag her. Good girl. Excellent. And when I ask her to back up, back. Good girl. She hasn't quite got that down. And we want to continue working on that because it's important to have your back up very well in hand and that horse respecting your space and those commands. And when you get that kind of control on the ground and the horse respecting you, that's going to translate under the saddle. And that's what you need to have a safer ride. But I want to start reducing that drama now. So I want to get my horse to really connecting with me, watching my body language, like she should in a herd. She should be watching that lead mare's language all the time. That's her job. That's her role. Good girl. And remember, this is a horse that didn't have much herd companionship, herd training. So she's having to learn this stuff the hard way. It's a lot easier when you're working with horses that have already been in a herd. They understand what you're saying when you're using their language. But a horse that doesn't understand the language, I'm having to teach her the language as well as being a herd animal. Good girl. I'm going to reduce that drama and we're going to do it again. I'm going to ask and then give. As soon as she gives, then I drop that pressure. I'm not going to drag a horse. Just make it uncomfortable for her not to respond. Good. She's a little too close to my space, so you need to get back. Good girl. Ask. Good. Good girl. Oh, she's got flies. We haven't even got to fly spraying yet, so she's going to have to have that. I need to get back. Get back. Good. Very nice. Let me love you for that. And she's licking and chewing. Good. She's chewing her mouth a little bit there. Good job, Tilly. You're trying. She's trying. You know, she's been on her own for a long time. This is going to take some time for her to understand. Good girl. Good girl. Hmm. A little too close, wasn't that? I try to give her the opportunity to do it right. Good, and now back. I don't want you in my space. You're too close. Back, back. Good, back. Good. A little more. Very good. She was doing it. She was backing up. And I didn't want to put on more pressure because she's already doing what I asked. So why would I come in there and go rah, 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 when she's already backing up? I'm just saying I need more. I need more. I need more. You want to be careful not to get mad at your horse when they're doing something you've already, you've asked them to do and they're doing it. Just because they may not be doing it at your speed, they'll get there. Don't force it. Acknowledge that she's trying and then just say, oh, I need a little more, I need a little more. You probably hear partnership a lot in natural horsemanship. Well, in holistic natural horsemanship, I am taking natural horsemanship one more level. And that's by addressing the whole horse, as we talked about earlier. What I find important is in natural horsemanship, there's this word partnership talked about. And what I find important about that statement is it has a sense of a business contract, business relationship. Isn't partnerships about business, typically? 
and it's usually 50-50. Partners are 50-50, typically. Well, I don't want a partnership. I don't want a business relationship. I don't want a business contract, and I certainly don't want a 50-50 going with my horse. I'm the herd leader. It's got to be 60, 40, 70, 30, maybe 90, 10, depending on the horse. And as we grow in confidence and trust in one another, I'll start sharing a little more of that responsibility. But in the meantime, I want to build a companionship, not a partnership. I want a companionship. And that's what holistic natural horsemanship really is about. Being a companion to your horse, with your horse. It's not a 50-50 partnership. I need to be the leader at all times because she is genetically wired to have a herd leader. So that requires me to step up to that position, that status, and to play that role. So I've noticed her feet are starting to get sticky, and I don't like that. She's not following nicely. She's starting to go, you know what, I don't want to walk anymore. So I'm going to make you pull me. No, I don't think so. So I pull her off balance by going to one side to the other. I'm going to stop. Very good. Very good girl. So I think she's got the stop down pretty well. Good girl. But her following isn't real great. That's going to come over time, though. She really doesn't know who I am. She's getting to know me. She's finding out that I'm a leader. But I'm kind of tough. And being a mare, she's definitely full of her own opinions. I find uh, girls tend to be more autonomous than boys and geldings and even stallions. Stallions, uh, they just want the comfort zone as well. But girls, oh, now that's nice, the head down. Girls. You know, that's usually who your leaders are in the herd. Yeah, sure, you have geldings from time to time, but it's usually the mares. So the mares, they take a little more time trusting you that you are a competent leader because they figure they could probably do a better job themselves. And that's not true. Not in a herd of two with a human. That isn't going to work ever, ever. You do not want to leave decisions up to your horse. It's too confusing for them. You have to be the one to make all the decisions for your horse. There's one exception. When you're on the trail, and you're going along trail and having a good time, your horse sees a snake and he shies from the snake, the rattle or whatever, the dangerous thing, the horse is taking care of himself and you. That's the only exception that a horse you know, can make a decision like that, something I don't see. And that comes in time, that trust, that you trust your horse to be able to make a decision like that, that just comes in time. And you will have that deep companionship with your horse. If you follow these, these steps, identified throughout my video series, Holistic Natural Horsemanship, it's going to deepen the communication and trust between you and your horse, and the two of you are going to have a harmonious companionship. Holistic Horsemanship training DVDs and equipment are available online at www.wholistichorsemanship.com or call toll-free 1-866-821-0374. For superior results, I highly recommend viewing the DVDs in the order listed below. Clinic Highlights, the DVD you just viewed, Training the Whole Horse, Five Fundamentals for a Safer Ride, Iron Free Riding, and for a Problem Horse, the Problem Horse Series 1.